Let's go back to the telephone at 556-1250 on Senior Focus, 1250 WTMA, with Dennis Christensen, and talk to Arthur from Mount Pleasant. Hey, Arthur, what you got for us today? Hello, Arthur, are you on the line? Hang on. Are you there? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, Yes, good morning. I just wanted to call and um, say we recently have used Dennis. Um, We have a special needs child, and uh, it is imperative. Uh, I'm speaking mainly to um, parents of special needs kids that they get their uh, children's affairs in order, if possible, um, before the age of 18. Um, And Dennis was just a tremendous help on being able to look around the corner and seeing what's uh, coming and what we're going to be dealing with, uh, having no idea, um, not having a legal mind. But he was just very um, caring, very nurturing, uh, very thoughtful, and um, just uh, relieved us from a lot of um, worries and challenges in addition to what we already have. Just knowing that that's set in place, and especially if the special needs child has a sibling, uh, it's not left on the sibling. Um, But I just want to encourage people out there that um, not only for estate planning, because you can do that also while you're there taking care of the special needs trust, that people would just make a point this summer um, to make an appointment with Dennis to um, set up and talk through uh, it's, it's very low pressure. There's no pressure, and uh, he's very reasonable. It's um, pennies on the dollar, and I uh, just want to encourage people to to make that um, appointment and do that because it's been tremendous having that load off of us, knowing that uh, our son would be taken care of properly. Appreciate your time. Well, th- thank you, Arthur, and there'll be a check uh, at the office at the front desk on Monday <laughs> morning. <laughs> Unsolicited <laughs> comments, though, right? But, but you know, Arthur has, has brought up some very important um, information that, that we deal with a lot of people who have children with disabilities. And we know th- for having done this for, for so long, the pressure that it puts on a family because you, when you do generally estate planning, you, what you're worried about when you have children is making sure that they're taken care of until they become 18 or 21, and then they go off and they have their own life, and now you just have to focus on you and your spouse. But when you have a child with disabilities, you have to plan not only for you uh, when you're adult, when your kids are adult, but for them too. So it's an increased responsibility that extends for the rest of your life. And so uh, one of the things that, that we try to do in kind of our motto is, is that we want to help families be able to sleep at night. We want to be able to answer their questions, deal with the issues that they have, help them anticipate issues that are to come down the road so that they don't wake up in the middle of the night in in panic wondering what happens if something happens to them or what happens to their children, what arrangements are going to be made, are they going to be left to the to the state. And so what we see is that it's more than just the documents. It's just kind of telling you what to expect and help have you have a game plan so that if something happens to you, there's family members that can help implement that game plan to take care of your child after you're gone because someone's going to have to do it, and you need some help sometimes in figuring it out. One of the things that that a lot of people don't fully understand who have children with disabilities is that until the child reaches age 18, uh, that the parents have a lot of authority and making decisions for, for their children. They can make medical decisions for them. They can deal with their money. They can set up accounts for their children's money. They have a lot of a legal authority to take care of all of the needs of their children. But once that child reaches age 18, that parental authority, and uh, the, the Greek or the Latin word for it is in loco parentis, uh, which means the parents uh, are uh, in charge of the child, that is gone. And once they become 18, they are their own legal person, and the parents lose much of the authority to make decisions for their parents, their child, whether they be medical decisions or dealing with their money or signing paperwork for them, they lose that. And so it's very important when someone has a child 
who is becoming the age of 18 and who has disabilities to see a lawyer to see what steps need to be necessary so that the parent has the ability to continue to make decisions and take care of the child's uh, physical issues, health issues, and financial issues. Because sometimes if you wait and don't do anything and something comes up and you don't have the proper things in place, it becomes very difficult and very expensive to work through that. But if you plan ahead, uh, you can in- we can anticipate those things are going to come up and come up with solutions that are that are best for you, that are best for your children, and and that can keep things in position so that if decisions need to be made and your child needs to be taken care of, you've set up the framework to do it. So that I urge all of you who have children. Uh, who are approaching the age of uh, 18 uh, to see a lawyer who is experienced in this field to help you kind of set up a game plan for dealing with what will happen when they become 18. It doesn't necessarily, and in all circumstances, mean that conservatorships and guardianships are necessary. There's this myth out there that any time you're, when you have a disi- disabled child and they become 18, you got to go get a conservator and a guardian. You don't often have to do that and we help people try to figure out what's the best way to take care of your uh, child all right you're listening to senior focus on 1250 wtma and wtma.com we've got 